welcome to Man's Model Moments. Last week I managed to get my order from the Italieri distributor in the shop, and in it were a couple of these boxes. The brand new 132nd scale MC202 Fulgore, meaning lightning or thunderbolt. This is a kit I've been looking forward to since Italieri's release announcement at the start of the year, so I'm hoping it doesn't disappoint. Looking at the box side, the kit appears to offer a lot. Multiple schemes and lots of extras. On the other side we have some nice renders of the kit detail, but rather than look at these, let's have a look inside the box. The box itself is a large, top opening affair with some attractive art of the aircraft in flight. Inside, the box itself is only about half to two thirds full, even though you're presented with a lot. Fishing this stuff out, we have a glossy painting and decaling guide, then a small errata sheet on the glossy colour instruction book. Immediately inside the cover of the instructions, we have two decal sheets, the first a set of smoke ring camouflage, the second a comprehensive set of markings for the different aircraft presented. A small bag of tubing and other bits, as well as the photo etch sheet, are both attached to a thick card bridge to protect them, though that can be taken out to reveal the plastic underneath. On top is the separately bagged transparency sprue, and then underneath them are two large bags containing the main paired sprue frames. The box itself is relatively thin for its size, though it doesn't seem to flex much and seems relatively stable. Putting the contents back in the box however, there is a lot of spare room, and I do think Italieri could have pretty much halved the depth of the box and not lost anything here. Taking a look at the instructions, the first impressions are good, as you're presented with a glossy, full colour cover on a substantial booklet of a decent size. Inside the front cover is a facsimile of all the decal sheets, which although it looks nice, I'm not sure what it achieves, maybe they just had to use up the colour printing? Opposite that is a short piece of history on the aircraft in various languages. The next pages are much more useful, having full frame layouts for all the pieces, including all the extra bits like the photo etch, tubing, etc. The other thing that Italieri do here, which all other manufacturers should emulate, is to give you paint references with FS numbers rather than just a particular paint range. Thank you, Italieri. We then crack straight on with the engine build, which continues onto the following two pages. These seem pretty unambiguous, including giving you measurements for the included tubing, for example. Building then continues over the next pages in large, clear, exploded diagrams. Here we see the option for having flaps up or down, cockpit instructions for the included decals. The cockpit instructions show a very comprehensively detailed assembly, with photo etch parts called out clearly when needed. Interestingly, Italieri have approached the cockpit build in a similar manner to Airfix with the 124 scale Spitfire. The radiators make extensive use of the included photo etch. There are different horizontal stabiliser styles depending on the aircraft mark chosen. Some of the enclosed photo etch is only applicable to early or late models, and is called out here. 
The kit even includes fine wire for the aerial, as shown on the last page of the instruction book. The rata sheet shows the corrected position of some parts and an amended version of one of the engine construction steps. The painting and decal guide booklet is really very nice here. First off, we have a three view of the aircraft showing the positioning of all of the smoke ring camouflage decals. More on those later. We then go through the colour and decal guides for each of the eight schemes provided. Each of the aircraft is displayed over a full double page spread in colour with four view format, making the markings completely unambiguous. All of the colours are called out in both shades and FS numbers, and you're not really going to see better than this anywhere else. Schemes are also provided for both during the fascist government and after the downfall of Mussolini, which is another nice aspect here. Next we're on to the decals, but before we talk about the actual decals themselves, Italieri also provide a full guide to using the smoke ring camouflage decals. This is fairly basic, but does also point out that their appearance will vary depending on the base coat they're applied over. That's good advice, because if you look at these alone by themselves, they're a sort of turquoise blue colour, which will appear green once over a sand yellow base coat, as they're translucent. Anyway, I think they're a great addition for all those brush painters who want to tackle this finish. Moving on to the main markings, they occupy a large sheet, a bicartograph, and look excellent with lots of variety included. Looking at the sprue frames cast in dark grey plastic, you can immediately see the finesse Italieri have managed here. Super thin panel lines, engraved and raised detail, as well as some very finely cast pieces. There are some complex shapes here too, such as the upper engine cowling, and flipping the frame over we can see the areas in the main fuselage that the cockpit inserts go into. Further examination of the frame shows these inserts with their moulded detail. Next up is the frame containing the wings, which has separate control surfaces and flaps, including the rudder, which being fabric covered, have this detail also moulded into their surfaces. The level of finesse here is also extremely high, similar to what we're used to from Tamiya or recent Airfix releases. Flipping this frame over, we can also see internal detail included in the inner flaps. The next frame is what I'd call the fiddly bits, and contains a host of different detail, from the engine through to the braider heavy machine guns. Weighted wheels are also included, but it should also be noted that I found a couple of pieces had detached from the sprue despite being bagged, likely because the frames have so much room to move around in the box. The final couple of frames are much smaller than the main two, and cover more fiddly bits and the rear horizontal stabilisers, of which there are two types depending on the production variant of the 202 you intend to model. Last we have two more bags containing the detail items. Specifically, the pretty large photo etch fret, which is a really nice addition in this scale. And then the last contains various wire and tubing for the engine, as well as the 3D decals for the cockpit instrument panel, something I've not used before. So let's start with that photo etch fret in close up. There are several meshes for the radiators, some parts of which are extremely delicate, but I'll judge them properly when I've actually built them. Next are the 3D instrument decals. As I said, I've never used these before, and despite the fact they don't look very three-dimensional here, the detail does seem quite pronounced and they do look very nice.
moving to the plastic again, and here's where those decals go. You can also see the detail present on the cockpit side here. Moving across this sprue, you can see just how thin and delicate some of this casting is, which should give it a really nice scale appearance in the final build, though it will mean your tweezers will be seeing a lot of use here. Here again you can see excellent detail with the lightning holes in this cockpit bulkhead, and here on what I think is part of the engine front and on part of the gun sight. The detail on the engine cowling, these panels, and the intake filter all demonstrate how sharp and crisp this tooling is, which is great to see. There's also a definite absence of flash in any of the parts, and no evidence of troublesome pin ejector marks either. The slick airframe of the 202 is also well captured in the main fuselage pieces here. This is the floor of the cockpit with more of the raised detail. The panel lines in the wing are also sharp, crisp and restrained further adding to the sleek lines of this aircraft. Here are some of the control surfaces. And this is the forward main spar and engine rear firewall, again with some nice detail. Here we can see some excellent raised rivet detail on those undercarriage door hinges. The undersurface of the wing showing the radiator recess and the engraved detail here. Here you can see the pair of braiders again, with their staggered muzzles, as well as a lot of the smaller details for the cockpit and engine. The main engine block and other engine pieces are also present here. These are the very nice flattened wheels with good hub detail. As well as a host of more finely cast fiddly bits. Here are the propellers. More of the engine block. The distinctive lower cowling. And the cylinder banks which are really nicely cast with all the ignition loops. Each of the exhaust is cast separately and the ends are hollow. Again, a really nice touch. There's also great detail on the side of the radiator and the undercarriage covers. Similarly across the horizontal stabiliser surfaces. The 
rotor pieces and gearbox also show some nice detail. The aerofoil control surfaces also have riveting to the underlying structure. Having a look at the transparency sprue, this is nice and clear, though the large amount of framing in the Fulgore didn't exactly give it ideal visibility. The transparency is a reasonable thickness, and it also contains other clear parts for the navigation lights and gun sight. So what's the initial impression of the Italieri 132nd scale MC202 Folgore? My initial thoughts can't help but compare it to the Airfix 124 scale Spitfire released last year. This is a similar price, and for that you're getting about half of the parts, as well as a smaller scale rendition of a similar aircraft. To compensate for that, the photo etch, 3D instrument panel detail, and camouflage decals all weigh in. A large range of subjects helps, especially across a broad time range and development of the aircraft. Different parts to accommodate that development also remind me of the Spitfire, as does the way Italieri have approached the build, with the clamshell cockpit assembly being made and then put into the body, and that similarity is a good thing. You do get a full engine, including pipes in a couple of sizes, wire for the aerial, and some top quality injection moulding. That all said, the high price tag is definitely going to put it out of the reach of some modellers, and there are some surprising things for this price. The first of these is the absence of any bays for the optional outboard machine guns on the later models. This wouldn't have upped the part count or complexity of the kit much, and would have enhanced those versions. There are no masks for the canopy, which I would really have thought should have been included at this sort of price point, and for as complex a job as the Mackie's cockpit calls for. The last of these is the box. It's way too big for what's inside, and I think Italieri should take a leaf from Airfix's book here and aim to fill boxes rather than have things rattling around. Apart from the obvious danger of parts coming off the sprues, as I experienced, it's just a better feeling. I do wonder if the big box is just to make it seem like you're getting more for your money than you really are. In the end, it's still a beautiful kit, and the individual modeler will have to gauge whether the price justifies the purchase. I do think if Italieri had priced this about 20% lower, its appeal would be broader and overall profit higher, since despite how good it was in World War II, it's still pretty niche outside of Italy and Italian World War II fans. The FX 124 scale Spitfire is still a better value proposition for this sort of price point, but I think if you do end up biting the bullet and swallowing the cost, you're not going to be disappointed in the actual model that's in the box. Let me give my heartfelt thanks to all of those wonderful channel members and Patreon subscribers for helping me to make these videos. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.